Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraAutomation.com and welcome to another new course from Isra Automation on automating Flutter app with Flutter driver. So this is an first ever course in internet on Flutter driver which we are going to be discussing a lot more detail on how to automate a Flutter app with Flutter driver. So in this video we are going to be talking about an introduction, installation and configurations of Flutter driver. So before getting into the Flutter driver itself, let's first talk a little introduction on what is this Flutter. Flutter is a multi-platform framework which was released on December 2018 as a stable build initially supported just mobile platform such as iOS and Android but now it supports platform not just Android and iOS like mobile platform and also support web, desktop and embedded systems along with the mobile platform. And this was something released recently in the Google I.O. conference in 2019 this year. Well, during the conference, the Google team talked something about the project Hummingbird, which was something where Flutter can be used for the web platform as well. And that's exactly what is being discussed in this particular Google I.O. 2019. And that's exactly what's happening right now. So now you can use Flutter to develop mobile app with the same code base you can use it for the web desktop and embedded as well so this is really really cool to see that flutter is going to be revolutionizing the way we are going to write the code and how we're going to test our application which means you're going to be writing the code for only one platform and you'll be seeing the same code running in multiple different platform without any problem which is really really awesome so once again this doesn't really define what the whole flutter is all about well flutter is an free and open source project developed and maintained by Google, which is really cool to see that it is not something proprietary or you don't really have to buy a license for that. It's free and it's gonna be free forever as an open source project developed and maintained by Google, which means we'll be seeing a lot of community contribution coming in for the Flutter project itself. And Flutter uses Dart as the programming language. So if you never heard about Dart, Dart was something released in 2015 by Google and it was not that great during that release and not a lot of people were trying to use that. But then during the release of Flutter, Dart came into the picture and the reason is because Dart support ahead of time compilation or AOT in many different platforms, not just in Android, but also in iOS and Windows and Mac OS and something like that. So that's the power of Dart itself and that's supported within Dart. And that's why Flutter uses Dart as the programming language. And then Flutter is fast, smooth and capable of running apps in 120 FPS, which is really, really cool to see that one of the greatest advantage while Google team showed on the Flutter was the capability of running the application in 120 FPS, which is something that you can see that you can obtain the whole capability of the upcoming mobile hardware is going to run the whole applications in 120 FPS. And you can see the super smooth way of using the application like never before. And then since Flutter uses their own widgets, it's highly customizable and you can see there are different kinds of widget available, something like stateless widget and stateful widget. And you can see how the stateful and stateless widgets actually work together to perform certain action. And again, we're not going to be going deep into the kind of widgets available or th things of that nature, but you can see that Flutter has these capability, like it's their own widget and their own layout and how you're going to write the coding and customize the code in such a way that you can adapt any one of the native iOS and Android application without much problem while writing the code. So basically you'll be writing one single code for any one of the mobile operating system and that code is going to work not just in one operating system but also is going to work in different operating system without you changing any one of the code. The reason is because everything is going to be on the Flutter's own widget. So there is no JavaScript bridge involved to convert the widget into the native compilation. Everything is gonna happen within its own widget. That's the power of Flutter itself. So as I said, the advantages of Flutter's are these. Flutter is super fast and runs on 120 FPS since it has its own widget and they don't use JavaScript bridges. And that's the reason Flutter is gonna be a game changer in the way cross-platform mobile application was developed. Flutter has hot reload option, 
which makes the changes made in the app viewed visually without going through so many build or deploy stuff like modern web app development. You can see that once you write any code in the web application, once you save that, the Node.js server will automatically compile that and refresh that within the web page and that's exactly that you can see within the Flutter itself. So you can change something on the UI once you do a save it's automatically going to hot reload and then it's going to visualize the same within any one of the emulator or the real device instantly once you do the hot reload. That's a really cool thing that was demoed during the Google I.O. and that's one thing which I feel as the most advantageous feature of Flutter itself. And Flutter uses Dart as the programming language as I already discussed and it is pretty similar to C Sharp, Java or JavaScript. So there is no great learning curve that is required for learning Dart itself, it's going to be pretty similar to the existing programming language skills that you have and it's going to be pretty easier to work with Dart itself. And there are many different features and advantages available for the Flutter which we'll not be discussing in this particular video because the whole intention of this video itself is to talk about the Flutter driver. So Flutter driver helps to test application developed in Flutter on both real devices as well as in emulators. And Flutter driver also uses Dart programming languages to write scenarios. Of course that makes really sense because Flutter is developed in Dart, so is the Flutter driver. And the Flutter driver is more like Selenium web driver or Protractor or Esperzo or Ogre in iOS, which is going to be testing the Flutter applications within any one of the platforms like iOS or Android. And Flutter driver is faster, easy to work with, and that's the real power of Flutter itself. You can see that once you do an execution of the Flutter driver, it's going to instantly instrument the application and it's going to start performing an action within the application of whatever command that you have specified. That's really, really cool to see that Flutter driver is really awesome and much faster than any other mobile testing platforms. And finally, the installation of Flutter driver it's not a very big deal at all because there is no separate installation of Flutter driver exist. It comes along with Flutter installation. So basically you need to have Flutter installed so that you can make use of Flutter driver itself. And again, Flutter is supported in all these below platforms like Windows, Mac and Linux operating system, which is really cool. So if you have any one of these operating system, you can start using Flutter within your machine and start working with it. The Flutter installation is going to be this. You need to have Windows, Mac and Linux operating system and then you need to download the Flutter SDK itself. Again, the Flutter SDK does not really contain something like an Android SDK or iOS SDK. It's going to be using your existing infrastructure. So basically, I assume that when you start installing the Flutter, you already have the Android SDK downloaded and you have already created the AVDs and similarly you have Xcode installed as well as the iOS simulator available for you to test the app within it. And once the SDK has been downloaded, you need to unzip the SDK to C colon Flutter folder or any of the folder of your choice or user username of Flutter within a Mac operating system or something like that. And then you need to set the Flutter home path, something like this. Again, setting the home path is going to be different for the various operating systems that you'll be using. In Windows, you can go to the environment variable and set the Flutter home path for the bin folder and similarly in Mac operating system you can use this command to set the home path. And finally you need to set up the IDE like IntelliJ or Visual Studio Code to make use of the Flutter driver. So these are the different things that you need to be doing for the Flutter driver installation itself. And again I have already downloaded the Flutter SDK in my Mac operating system and also I have set the home path and stuffs. And then I have also installed that within my IntelliJ and VS Code. But I'll quickly show you how it's going to look like. So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to my Mac operating system. All right, so this is my Mac operating system. And then I'm going to open the Visual Studio Code. As you can see, I have already installed the Flutter plugin within my Visual Studio Code. So this is the only thing that you need to do. You need to go to the extensions and just search for Flutter and you can see that Flutter 3.1 version comes in here. You just need to install this, something like this. It will install that. And once the Flutter installs, it will also install Dart for you. So you can just see once it installs, Dart language supported debugger is also installed along with that uh, installation. 
right? So this is the only thing that you need to be doing for the integration of the IDE. Once the Flutter is installed, it'll ask you for the SDK of the Flutter because this is just an extension within the Visual Studio IDE. So once it is installed, it'll ask you where is that particular Flutter SDK that you have downloaded from the website. So the website which I'm talking about is gonna be this one. So just search for Flutter and uh, let's go here to the install folder. And you can see that this is the Mac operating system. You can download the stable zip file into your C colon and this is the path which I was talking about to set the home path. And then you can see how things are actually working. And the one more important thing that you'll be doing is going to be using the Flutter doctor. So I'll just quickly show you what Flutter doctor means. So if you just type Flutter doctor, you can see that it will tell you a summary of what have been installed within your machine and then what are things which is not available within your machine for your test to be not running or your code to be not executed. So it says that the Android tool chain uh, of this particular SDK, some of the license has not been accepted, which is fine. But it says that there is no device connected and it says everything looks good. I mean, there is no problem in my side, but if there is any issues like there is no Android SDK available or there is no Android home path set, then it's going to be saying you that the home path is not set or the Android studio is not available and something like that. So you need to have those things before you can start working with the Flutter itself. So for instance, if I just open the Android studio and if I go to the configuration and go to the AVD manager and cold boot start right now you can see that the emulator is actually running and now if i just run the flutter doctor once again you can see it is going to show me the connected device this time by identifying this particular device is actually been connected so it says that connected device as one available so this flutter doctor command is very very handy and you'll be using this a lot during the installation process so make sure that you remember this particular command and try to see what are the things which is missing and what are the things which is not installed or something like that. So this is very, very helpful while working with it. So as that said, I have already installed the Flutter and the Dart within my machine and then I can start working with the Flutter itself, which we'll be doing in our next video by creating a very, very super simple sample application. Followed by that, we'll also write a super simple Flutter driver code and we'll see what are the different ways that we can identify an element and how to work with an Flutter application using Flutter driver and perform different way of testing with Flutter driver. And once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.